Hi, it's Przemek here. I'm the designer and the creator of Metagrid. And welcome to the last episode of a uh, sneak peek into the next iteration of Metagrid application uh, for, um, for iPad. Uh, today, I've got a couple of news for you. First of all, we finally got the green light from Apple uh, to re release the uh, beta version. So if you have already registered for uh, taking part into our beta program, uh, you are going to get the link uh, today or tomorrow. And I'm so happy about finally uh, our child uh, is um, going out uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's getting more mature. And of course, this is a uh, huge load of work in front of us uh, to uh, um, implement your feedback and to uh, iron out all the remaining bugs that you're going to report. Uh, but as I said, it's a huge, huge milestone for us. And I'm so happy that we have reached it after one year of a very, very hard work. Secondly, um, we have made it the important decision uh, to uh, release um, this version of the app as a dedicated separate app. Uh, so it's not going to be Metagrid version 1, but it's going to be Metagrid Pro existing as a, a uh, separate app on the App Store. The reason for that is that we want to uh, leave uh, Metagrid version 1 uh, on the App Store and to enable the users to use the uh, version 1 uh, on older devices and uh, also, don't force the upgrade on you. Uh, so if you're happy with the Metagrid version 1, um, just use it and no, nobody's going to take it away from you. On the other hand, Metagrid uh, Pro, because it's, it's the name of our new application, uh, version 2 of uh, the existing Metagrid 1, uh, Metagrid Pro is going to uh, support uh, iPads uh, starting from iOS 12 and later, uh, which still gives us a huge uh, number of devices that are going to be supported. So um, I'm going to talk about the uh, pricing and the uh, model uh, and the de dedicated video. We are not going into the subscription model. It's going to be a uh, one-time payment with a very generous, uh, ge with a very generous free version. Uh, but as I said, uh, I'm going to talk about it uh, later on. Um, today I'm going to talk about the content management. Uh, we have. Um, done our best to uh, provide the workflow that is flexible, that is uh, intuitive, and that will give you um, even a greater control on MetaGrid content like grids and uh, the new concepts that, that we have um, introduced like workspaces and profiles. We have created a dedicated module that's called Content Manager, and I'm going to show it to you, and uh, I hope that it's going to make uh, content management and importing and exporting grids, workflow, workspaces, and profiles um, easy for you and uh, for us. So let's dive in and let's see what uh, Content Manager is all about. So when you start MetaGrid Pro for the first time, you will see Desktop Mac or Desktop Win uh, in the upper uh, left corner with the um, desktop computer icon. That's the default profile uh, that MetaGrid displays if uh, MetaGrid cannot find the dedicated profile for the application that is in focus on your computer. So I'm going to show you uh, the content manager now. So I press Edit. I press the uh, profile name, and uh, here we've got the grid selector. All right. From this uh, layer, I'm able to uh, preview and to show the grids uh, in the dashboard, but also it's an uh, easy way to add a new grid. So I'm going to create a new grid from here, uh, clicking, uh, tapping the plus icon. I'm going to make it red. And uh, I'm going to uh, set the resolution. And uh, if I scroll down, um, you can see that uh, you are able to assign a MediCC message that will uh, display this grid uh, if this MediCC message is received uh, from a computer by MetaGrid. 
So I'm not going to create it, uh, to assign it to uh, MediCC message. So I'm going to click create. And here I am, I've got two grids. So it's the first grid, the default one, and that's the new grid that I've just created. I can preview it in a uh, gallery mode. So clicking, uh, tapping this uh, uh, icon over there. And um, so um, I've got two grids for the desktop uh, profile now. Um, basically, I can create a, a scene. Uh, I've, uh, currently, I've got just one scene. And uh, so I press edit in the edit mode and I tap add. Now I've got two scenes. I can add an icon. So let me choose some uh, arbitrary uh, one and let me assign the uh, grid to the scene. So here I am and I've got two grids, uh, the first one and the second one for my desktop uh, profile. Now uh, let's go into the content manager. So I again, uh, tab the profile name and I tap uh, the content manager button. And here I am. As you can see, uh, there, are, uh, there are three areas, uh, profiles, workspaces, and grids. And dedicated buttons, win and Mac. Because uh, MetaGrid will enable you to create different profiles, workspaces, and grids uh, for Mac and for Windows with these two buttons. I'm on Mac, so uh, by default, uh, Content Manager opens in the, uh, with a uh, Mac button enabled. And as you can see, I've got two profiles. The first one, uh, the, these are default profiles that are going to be present on your MetaGrid. A desktop and OmniSpace. And um, then we've got Workspaces. Uh, workspaces are the collections of grids. Uh, this object will enable you to import uh, the workspaces, uh, the grids uh, from your colleagues or from us, and will enable you to leave the collection of grids, of the scenes, of the grids, of the arrangements uh, intact. Uh, so basically, I can create a new grid, uh, sorry, a new workspace. So I'm uh, tapping the plus icon, and here I am. I've got uh, and I've got two workspaces now, and um, let me edit it. I'll just change the name, and uh, I will call it test, and uh, I can activate it. So I swipe right. I sorry, I select it, and I swipe right, and I press activate. And um, now uh, my desktop profile has got uh, the test workspace active with just only one grid. Contrary to the default desktop workspace, which have got two grids. So when, when, I, when I leave the content editor, as you can see, the desktop Mac profile has got only just one scene uh, with one grid assigned. So again, if I go to the content manager, and I activate uh, the uh, default desktop work workspace. Now, when I leave uh, the manager, uh, again, I've got two scenes with two grids. This will be a great help for you and for us to test um, workspaces received from other people and to import buttons, grids, or just parts of, uh, of uh, their uh, content, uh, leaving uh, your content intact. Uh, so um, let me go to the uh, content manager again. Here I am. So, um, and you've got the grids page. And uh, of course, you've got the uh, gallery preview like that. And you can create a new grid uh, from this point as well. So let me create the third grid, which is going to be pink. And let me make it a bit bigger. So create, and now I've got three grids. When I leave the content manager, and it's going to display uh, the grid that is selected in the content manager and the scene shows the uh, rectangular shape um, under, uh, in the bottom uh, section of a uh, currently selected scene. It means that there is a disparity between the scene assigned to uh, the grid assigned to the scene 
and the currently displayed scene. So when I press the scene button over here, it goes uh, back to the, uh, it shows the grid assigned to the scene, right? Currently, my desktop for Mac profile has got three uh, grids. Two of them are already assigned uh, to the scenes, but uh, let's say I want to have um, the third grid that I have just created assigned to the first scene as a secondary grid. So uh, I've got a name conflict, but I'm not going to change it. So, but, um, so, now I've got two grids assigned to the first scene and as you can see there is a, a little circle in the uh, upper right corner of the scene button. It means that uh, there is the secondary uh, scene assigned to uh, secondary gr grid assigned to the scene. So when I press uh, the scene button I can switch between secondary and primary scene okay this one has just only uh, the primary grid assigned this one has got primary and secondary grid assigned and i can uh, uh, switch uh, between them by tapping the uh, scene button all right um so let me now create a um, a new profile i want to create a profile for my uh, xcode application so let me switch to xcode on my Mac, here I am. I go again to the content manager. I press the plus icon and I can create a new profile, either a custom profile or the profile for the uh, application that is currently in the focus on my computer. So I press Xcode. And here I am. So MetaGrid has created the profile, the default workspace, and the default grid. All right. And now it's, that's the starting point for you to create the custom content for the particular application. So when I leave uh, the content manager, now I've got the Xcode uh, profile active. When I switch, for example, to Safari, uh, which has no um, profile uh, configured yet. You can see that uh, my MetaGrid um, showed the desktop uh, profile again. I'm going to go to the back, uh, back to Xcode, and then the. Um, you can see that uh, mm, you can see the uh, Xcode profile present on the display. Uh, when I change the scene. Uh, for example, uh, uh, I am on the second scene in, in the desktop for Mac profile. When I switch between the um, profiles, the scene selection is uh, remembered. Uh, and there is the Omnispace. Uh, so Omnispace works as uh, the same as in MetaGrid version 1. It's a dedicated um, space uh, available in all uh, applications. Uh, so you just press this button over there to display the uh, Omnispace profile that have that can have again multiple workspaces and multiple grids uh, assigned. So yes, that was the Content Manager in MetaGrid Pro. I'm sure it will enable us to create rich content uh, for MetaGrid Pro to share uh, your and our um, profiles, workspaces, grids, buttons, and faders, and uh, use all those objects in our everyday uh, work while working with uh, various applications on Macs and PCs. So keep your fingers crossed. As I said, we are entering the better phase, and um, we're going to incorporate uh, your feedback and uh, to um, iron out all, uh, I mean, as much, as many bugs as possible and to prepare for the release. And um, I'm very, very happy for that. Thanks for watching. Uh, stay safe and uh, let's stay in touch. Bye.